Is it Bach or is it Bird? Um, to me, that sounds like both in the beginning, and then at the end, there's some bebopisms that give it away. But today, I want to talk a little bit about harmonic minor, uh, whether that's even a real thing, um, and the use of the seven diminished chord in minor as well. Uh, just a little bit today. Um, trying to do some longer videos uh, for YouTube purposes, uh, and I feel like this is a slightly bigger subject, so it's hard to wrap up in about a minute, but I'll post some of this on Instagram as well. Um, so. If you listen to that line, that's on Bebop, on Dizzy Gillespie's tune Bebop, and Bird uses these kinds of phrases all the time. What he's really doing is alternating between the one minor chord, or the one minor six, D minor, and C sharp diminished, the seven diminished chord. Uh, and that seven diminished chord came into fashion right before Bach was born, uh, with people like Monteverdi. It was considered the new hip chord, the full seven diminished. You'll hear it used for emotional effect uh, in the early 1600s in Italian opera. Uh, and it's still being used today, and it gives you these beautiful, very classical, baroque, or early music sounding phrases that I'm sure Bird got from practicing out of the Closé books like he's known to have done, uh, playing out of classical etudes and things like that. So when he's in a minor key, especially a tune like Bebop, which is basically is just D minor for the whole A section, um, he's using a lot of these alternating one minor to the seven diminished chord type phrases. So here you have one, <laughs> two diminished, which is the same as seven diminished. Back to one. Back to seven. Staying on seven. Third of the one. Back to seven. So just one, five, one, five, one, five. I say five because five, seven, flat nine is sort of the bebopified version of the seven uh, diminished chord. But really, you're listening for all those Phrases that go like this, C sharp up to B flat. And that's where the harmonic minor thing comes in. So harmonic minor is this. But you hardly ever hear any place in music where they just play the scale ascending like that. Descending, maybe, yes. Um, so I think of harmonic minor more as a collection of notes. It's not so much a scale that's going to come up in your phrases, but it's a collection of notes that are used in certain patterns, and you need to know what those patterns are, at least to play in a very uh, tonal type setting, which is a good thing to be able to do before you take things out and maybe play through the modes of harmonic minor and get more adventurous. So I'm just talking about grounding your uh, harmonic knowledge. So when I think of harmonic minor, when it pops up most in Bach, for example, is a phrase like this. <laughs> So that uh, passage from the invention, uh, D minor invention, I'm not sure, I forget, <laughs> um, uses the harmonic minor scale in the way that it's used most often, which is either the flat six going down to the seventh, or the seventh going up to the flat six. Either way, that flat six wants to resolve to the five, and then it's usually used in some kind of passage to the third of the key. So, so I went C sharp, B flat, A, G, F. And all that really is, is outlining the C-sharp diminished. And there's that other famous bebop cliche, I'll do it in C minor, uh, a, a minor in my key. That you hear all the time, Stan Getz likes to use that one. Same idea, it's just one in the first inversion. Connecting nicely with a little line down to the third of the E7 or the G sharp diminished. Back to the third of the root of the root chord. Back to the third of the E7 or the G sharp. And that's a beautiful pattern that you can use in a tune like Bebop and Bird did. Really fun. Um, so patterns like that are prolific, or pr uh, all over bebop, I should say, uh, but they're also all over Bach. Uh, I was just transcribing the, flu mi uh, the minor flute partita uh, in A minor, which has a phrase just like that at the beginning. There's that flat six down to the seven. Back to the third. So that really uses almost the exact same kind of motion. 
Uh, so this is idiomatic to Baroque music, and I think it kind of made its way through etude books uh, and Bird's general love of classical music. It made its way into bebop, and Dizzy uses these phrases as well. Uh, and then even if you go back to the swing era, you'll hear uh, John Kirby, who loved to do arrangements of classical music. They use this kind of stuff all over the place, too. Um, so the classical influence is strong. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today, so I'll wrap it up there. But really experiment with these. Uh, when I play in a minor key, I'm using patterns like this all the time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.